Hello, my 117 students. Oh, nice of you to join me for this short video. Anyway, um, here's a little bit of, of an explanation about what the difference between AC, DC, and ground coupling is for an oscilloscope. So, first off, let's explain what this little circuit is a little bit first. So, here we have where what the oscilloscope sees. Here, on this one, channel 1 input, this is what you actually connect your channel inputs to, so that's the probes connected to your circuit. And then we have this stuff in the middle. Your AC coupling line, which is right there. Your DC coupling line. And finally, ground. So, what's the big deal with AC versus DC coupling? Well, the main thing about AC and DC coupling is that the AC coupling has this capacitor in the way. That removes any of the problematic DC voltages out of the signal seen by the amplifier. Really what you're doing when you're choosing between AC, DC, and ground is that you're changing the selector switch so that way the oscilloscope knows what line to read off of. So, for sake of illustration, let's take a look at a DC and AC signal. So we have, let's say, oh, 2 volts peak to peak from the AC source and 1 volt from the DC volt source. So that would produce a sine wave whose center is at 1 volt DC. And whose would go up to 2 volts and down to 0 volts. So, what would the different channels see? Well, this DC line would see exactly this. A 2 volt peak to peak AC signal centered around 1 volt. How about this DC line? Well, it would see something slightly different. Instead, it would see a sine wave centered around 0 volts. That would go up to 1 volt and down to negative 1 volt. That's because of the capacitor that blocks the DC component of the signal. So if you're choosing AC coupling, you won't have that 1 volt of DC included into the signal seen by the oscilloscope. If you choose DC, that 1 volt will be. And if you choose ground, well, you'll see the oscilloscope's ground which you can actually change and set. However, you won't be needing to do that for this class. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. So for the purpose of this class and for mostly your sanity, you won't need to do any ground coupling, as far as I know. However, if you do want to compare your signal to ground, ground sticking one of the channels on ground coupling might be a good idea. That being said, it would be better to actually just connect a probe to your ground since sometimes ground isn't necessarily zero volts. 
anyway, um, hopefully this gives you a little bit more of an explanation about the difference between AC, DC, and ground coupling is. Um, AC coupling is really helpful, especially when you have a very, very small sine wave at a very high voltage. So like you have 7 volts DC and your sine wave is 100 millivolts peak to peak. You're not really going to be able to see that sine wave very well unless if you take it through the AC coupling. Now if you have a large sine wave and want to also look and see if the system is biased properly, which will become more important later on, more so in 108, then you'll want to use DC coupling that way you can see the DC bias voltage and your signal all at the same time. Hopefully this gives you a little bit better understanding of what AC, DC, and ground coupling is, and I will see you in class soon.